Hey everyone, it's uh, Scotchy Sketchman here again. Uh... Hey everyone, Sketchy Scotsman here again, coming to you from my happy place tonight. I'm in my garage and doing a bit of maintenance on my Cube Stereo Hybrid e-bike. And I'm here to have a moan about the headset on this bike. I'm here to have a bit of a moan about the Cube Stereo Hybrid e-bike. In particular, the headset that comes with the Action Team is a piece of <laughs> There's a few issues I've been having with it and I'm here to talk about them tonight. But you just don't expect such a poor headset to come with such a high spec uh, e-bike. There's two main issues with it. Uh, one is the bearings. In the poor Scottish weather that we have, ride in the rain in the mud a lot and it gets cleaned a lot as well the bike. Uh, I found that the stock bearings uh, really started to become gritty, um, the steering became notchy and uh, required me to pull out the bearings and give them a service quite often. The next one is an issue that developed over maybe a year of riding now. Uh, I'm starting to get some play on the on the headset uh, no matter how much I tighten the top cap to try and pull the headset assembly together, I'm still getting that play. It's fairly easy to take this headset apart, remove the stem, the spacers, and this top cap. For those of you who haven't explored uh, headsets before, this is how they look. So for the top headset, there's a headset cup, which is pressed into the frame. There's a bearing, which slots inside that. And then uh, there's an expansion uh, ring, which uh, sits in there and around the steerer. Uh, and then you have your top plate of your headset. The bottom headset is very similar. Again, it's a cup, uh, a bearing. Uh, there is what is called a, a crown race, which is actually pressed onto the steerer tube on your fork. And that sits on the underside of the bearing. So the first problem I'm going to talk about is the bearings. Um, this is actually the stock bearing, which comes with the FSA headset on the Cube Stereo Hybrid. Um, it's not a sealed bearing. Good things about the stock bearing, you can dismantle it and surface it fairly easy. The bad thing about the stock bearing, it's not completely sealed. There's actually a gap between the kind of upper and lower rings within the bearing. So that's uh, a weak point, especially in the kind of crud that we ride in the Scottish winter and Scottish summer as well. Uh, the moisture and the dirt actually eventually works its way into these bearings. So more maintenance is required with the stock type of bearing. It's only a minor problem. It's more of an inconvenience because functionally the bearings are perfect. It just means you have to dismantle, uh, clean and regrease a little bit more often uh, to solve the problem with the stock headset, I've replaced uh, both the upper and lower headset bearings with sealed cartridge bearings like this. As you can see, there's no gap uh, between uh, the upper and lower parts of the bearing. So the good thing about these bearings are they're very well sealed, uh, don't require servicing. The bad thing about sealed cartridge bearings are that they aren't ser serviceable. So once they get gritty or they seize up, there really isn't any way to fix them. You just have to buy a new pair and uh, reinstall them. If you are replacing your headset, just to double check, uh, remove the original bearing and you'll often find some stamps or, or markings on the side of the bearing. This one here, you can just about see it. I put the part number into Google, found the specification for the bearing. So in particular, the outer diameter, the inner diameter, the thickness and the taper angles. And with those four bits of information, you can go and find a replacement, which is exactly the same. Uh, I will paste the information in the description for this video to tell you the spec of the bearing that's uh, fitted in this headset. Uh, it was a straight swap in and out and job done. So that's the first problem solved. The cheap bearings that come with the FSA headset, swap them out for cartridge bearings, practically making it service free now, the headset. Let's talk about the second problem I've been having, which is the more major one, which is uh, play developing on the headset after uh, a year or over a year of riding. Uh, 
Due to the way uh, this headset is made up, and in particular the use of a plastic expansion spacer in the headset rather than a metallic one. No matter how much preload um, or tightening I do of the top stem cap, this isn't able to put enough pressure onto the expansion ring, the plastic ring, uh, to take up the kind of slack in the headset. There's actually little metal filings you can see on the edge of that cap. If you look at the top of the headset uh, cup as well, it's also the same. Um, so what's been evident is that this cap has just been rubbing away. Essentially, these two bits have been binding. So why is that? Well, if I take the spacer out, it will show you. This is the expansion uh, ring that we're talking about. Most headsets uh, you will see have metallic rings. In this FSA headset, they really have made this a cheese. It is uh, plastic. It's worked for a year, but I think what's happened over that year is that this spacer has deformed over time with the pressure and the forces on it. So what's happening now is that uh, this top cap is sitting against the bearing cup before this expansion ring has really done its job to tighten the whole thing up. Now I've taken a set of calipers to this uh, to measure the thicknesses all the way around and actually when I've inspected it you can see physically that it's a different shape from one side to the other. So it shows that, oh, I think it shows that this, this ring has actually squashed over time. So what's the solution to this? Well, I can either replace uh, this piece with a new one, if that's if I can find spares. And the final solution is to completely replace the top headset. Okay, so you want to replace the headset. Common question out there is what size of headset do I need for my stereo hybrid? For the 2020 Action Team, they all use a ZS56 standard uh, headset cups. So ZS56 is actually, um, stands for zero stack 56 millimeters. Uh, what that means is uh, this cup, which is pressed into the frame, are 56 millimeters out of diameter. So ZS56 is what you need for both upper and lower bearing cups. The other important measurement that you need to know is the steerer tube dimensions. As far as I know, all the stereo hybrids come with forks with a tapered steerer tube. For the bottom, you need to have a headset which is suitable for a 1.5 inch steerer tube. And at the top headset, you need a headset which is compatible with a 1 and 1 8 steerer tube. You might also see those dimensions in millimeters instead of uh, inches. So, okay, ZS56, 1 1 8, 1.5 inch. Still not answered the question, what headset do I need to buy? Well, I wish it was that simple. As far as I've searched, I haven't found many suitable headsets out there as a complete kit. So your best option is to use a, a pick and mix uh, system. So once again, ZS, ZS56, outer dimensions and in diameter, has to be 1.5 inch steerer. That's the kind of cup you're looking for at the bottom. For the upper headset, again, you're looking for ZS56, but this time you're looking for a one and one eighth steerer compatibility. Now I've only found a, f a couple of manufacturers out there who make these um, widely available. Superstar Components do one. Although their website isn't very clear, it only gives you the ZS56 dim dimension for the upper headset. Uh, but I've been reassured by a number of people who've purchased it that it does in fact come with a 1 and 1 8 fit uh, for a tapered tube like this. So why is it so hard? <laughs> well, uh, Cube have chosen the ZS56 cups bottom and top. For a lot of other bikes out there actually use a ZS56 at the bottom and then a smaller cup up top. Most of the ZS56 upper headsets I've found are for one and a half inch steerer tubes and not the one and one eighth, which is a problem getting. 
I think the reason Cube have done this though and selected this particular headset is because it allows for an integrated uh, cable routing through the stem. Okay, I've droned on a lot about headsets now. I've talked about bearings, headsets, cups. What's the whole point in this video? Well, hopefully uh, it will help a few of you out there track down some of the problems I've had. So whether that's creaky headsets or gritty feeling headsets through to play in the headset even though you've tightened the, the stem bolt, uh, sorry, the top cap bolt. Um, you might find that it's the same as the issues I've been having. Cube, please consider changing headsets in future models of your bike for ones with uh, sealed cartridge bearings and pick a headset that doesn't use a plastic expansion ring. Um, the fact that this little ring, which probably costs pennies to produce, has really let down this headset within a year of owning the bike. Okay, moan over. Uh, if you're still interested in how I'm gonna fix this headset, uh, please stay tuned. We're gonna talk about how I will design up one of these and 3D print a replacement. What I've actually designed here is a new version of the spacer that we've seen on the headset. I basically measured up the original. Um, change that you will notice is that the opening is much smaller in the the new version on the screen. It's because I don't run integrated cables, so I don't need that big an opening in the stem. <coughs> So by adding more material there, I think it should make it a little bit stiffer, um, spread the load a little bit, make it last hopefully a bit longer before the new one will compress uh, or change shape. So now all that's left is to turn this into 3D print. <coughs> So here it is, here is my 3D printed expansion ring. A couple of differences from the original you can see. I've closed the gap a little bit. I don't use the internal uh, headset routing for the cables. Uh, so I feel if you close that gap, it gives the ring more of a chance to, to do its job and stay in shape for as long as it can. Uh, the blue ring is actually slightly thicker than this black ring as well which hopefully allows the headset to properly compress against it and do its job. Going in reverse order, expansion ring back on. It's a nice little fit. Into the bearing, perfect. Um, so that's a good fit. It's locked the bearing in place uh, very nicely. And I'm gonna put the top cap back on. Go. Stem and bar. The spacers up top just to finish it off. There we go. Now don't over tighten the top um, stem bolt because you only need enough in it to stop any movement and any play in the headset. Uh, you don't really need to crank them up because what happens is then you start putting kind of extra loads on the bearings which will mean they either will be stiff or they, they don't last as long. So, yep, so that's completely removed the play. I can hold the front brake and rock it back and forward. No play there. If I lift it. Oh yeah, that's nice and free and smooth now. Much better. Before I uh, replaced that spacer, I was either getting play in the headset or if I tightened the bolt enough, some of the play would be removed, but what I'd get is a binding of the, the top headset as well. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me for this episode. Um, I'm sorry if I bored everyone to hell talking about bearings and bearing specifications, crowns and cups and whatever else to do with headsets, but 
I felt that I had to get that frustration out there, spending thousands of pounds on an e-bike and getting a bit of a garbage headset in my opinion. On that note, I hope this has helped everyone and it's been interesting at least and we'll speak to you again soon.